And in a blink of an eye, everything can change. And that's what happened to my family. And first was Kaylee. Um, but Kaylee, uh, she's 24 years old. And when she was 21, she was diagnosed with epilepsy for the first time ever. Um, she had a grand mal seizure. Uh, my mom and I and Kaylee were on vacation and she had a seizure and she was diagnosed with epilepsy. Kaylee was a high school English teacher at Martin County West. She had taught there for three years. She met the love of her life, Kurt, and she was getting married to him in Jan on January 25th of 2014. And she was gonna move home to our house. She resigned her job so she could move home. We were gonna plan her wedding, and then she was gonna get married, and she was going to move up uh, to be with Kurt up near the metro area up here. And I waited, and I waited, and she didn't come home. Kaylee must have taken a nap, and when she woke up, she had a seizure and she died of cardiac arrest. I wanna just talk to you a little bit about some epilepsy facts because you know what? Epilepsy is all over the place. And first of all, 65 million people worldwide have epilepsy and one in 10 people will have a seizure in their lifetime. Three million Americans have epilepsy and over 150,000 new cases are diagnosed in the United States every year. And one in 26 people will have epilepsy in their lifetime. And that's important to know that if you have epilepsy or someone you know has epilepsy, that the Epilepsy Foundation of Minnesota is a, a great option for you. We didn't use the Epilepsy Foundation because we didn't think that epilepsy would take her life. But the next term is SUDEP, sudden unexpected death from epilepsy, when a perfectly normal person who has their seizures under control dies for no apparent reason. And when I told two neurologists that I thought she would die, both of them gave me confirmation that that wouldn't happen. And then when she passed away and I called them, they said, oh, that's sudden unexpected death from epilepsy. And that's what she died of. And um, I decided I needed to get some counseling. It, it was time I didn't do this on my own. Um, but I went to a Christian counselor because I knew that I needed God. And so I went to the counselor and he was amazing and really prayed with me a lot, helped me decipher that God wasn't punishing me, that there wasn't a reason this happened. I mean, really helped me out. And he said to me on uh, July 25th, I think you're gonna see some signs, so make sure you look for them. Next morning, my girlfriend, Chris, and I was July 26th, calls me, she goes, I think you're gonna see a sign. It's like, really? Uh, yeah. I know it, <laughs> you just wait. And so she says, you're gonna see a sign? She goes, really, look for it. And I'm looking out the window at my flower garden, and I'm watching all these birds, little teeny birds that just hatch, and they're jumping up and down in my bird feeder. And I wondered, how many years in a row, in the last 20 years, does this happen every year at this time? But I never, ever stopped to look, because I'm always running around. I never stopped to smell the roses. And as I'm watching these birds, I look in my garden and this single purple petunia shows up in the middle of my garden. It's, so I look at the petunia and I go, huh, well, look at that. I don't have any petunias. I don't have any purple. That clearly just showed up. Walked outside, walked around, looked at it. I'm claiming it. That, I'm claiming it. I'm claiming that petunia right there, that's gonna be my sign. I don't really care what you think or you think or anybody else, but that's my sign. And purple, that's Kaylee's wedding color, and purple is epilepsy. So I have this feeling that Kaylee's uh, friend Liz, her dad Joe, I feel like he was with her the night that she passed away. The reason I feel that is because three months before Kaylee passed away, Joe passed away. The night that she died, the last person she talked to for an hour and a half was Liz. And I felt, and she said it was the best conversation ever. And I felt that, you know what Joe was saying, Liz, you, you know, just talk it out, have this great time, because this is going to be tough for you. So I was with Liz, Liz's mother, Kathy, the day before this. And so I went to post this on Facebook because I like to tell people like, oh, I got this sign. So I went to post it on Facebook and I noticed it was Kathy's birthday. So I called her up and I'm like, hey, you little stinker, happy birthday. And I got a sign from God, I got it. It's this purple petunia. She goes, no way, because that was out her front step, that purple petunia. So we bawled and bawled and bawled, like how does she get a purple petunia? How do I get a purple petunia? So I put it up on Facebook and people kept getting random purple petunias growing everywhere. These are random petunias. That one is at my house in the corner. So these petunias, some, so people would send me a message and they're like, hey, Kaylee showed up at my house. And all these, there's another one, all these amazing petunias. 
what it was for everyone because I put that sign up because I claimed it. It not only became a sign for me, but everyone who had lost a loved one, they would say, hey, Deb, you know what? I have a purple petunia. My dad passed away. I think he's here saying hi. And it just became like this universal sign of hope for all of us. And purple petunias were sh are showing up everywhere. That was in my brother's driveway. This one was outside my sister-in-law's work uh, the day that her daughter went into treatment. And then, all right, so then it's coming into winter. And I mean, my purple petunia is going to die because it's winter. So I kept asking people, you know, can you save petunias? Can you like dig them up? So I just went, dug it up and I put it in a pot. And everyone's like, yeah, it won't live. I think they thought if I lost it that I would think Kaylee died again. But I know that the petunia is not her. So I knew that that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so I brought it into the house and it bloomed all winter oh. long. In fact, it bloomed for two years oh. before it died on me. Oh. So the purple petunia was like such a big deal. So Coach Kill of the University of Minnesota Gopher football team, um, he has a seizure on the sidelines and you, you saw all that. And the news people say, oh, well, he has epilepsy, but he won't die from that. And then Coach, when they interview him, yeah, I have epilepsy, but I won't die from that. <laughs> Guess whose mama sent an email to Coach Kill and said, uh, you could die from this. And I put her obituary and I put the article from the newspaper, um, Martin County West mourns the loss of a young teacher. And guess who called me? Hey, Deb, this Coach Kill. Yeah, I'm like, what? And he wanted to know all about Kaylee. He wanted to know about her medication. He wanted to know about her seizures. And we talked and talked and he said, you know what, Deb? I will never, ever, let epilepsy kill me. I will resign from football before I let it take my life. So Coach and I became really, really good friends. And he credits Kaylee in so many ways for saving his life. This right here is the picture of the two of us. I spoke at his book signing. And this is at the epilepsy gala, because remember, I'm going to conquer the world and I'm going to save the world from epilepsy. So we became these amazing friends. And that's where when Coach Kill stepped down from football, guess who called me on the phone? Did you see that grueling press conference? It was just horrid. And I get this phone call. I'm like, oh my gosh, coach. You know, and he's like, he goes, I felt like I died that night. He goes, after I left my players, I walked away and that's my whole life and I felt like I was gonna die. You know what, I could have said, I know it, you looked horrible, you looked miserable, like what, what are you gonna do with your life? Oh my gosh, that's all you've ever done as coach and now you're sick and I mean, I don't know, like, it's pathetic, man. I mean, geez, I don't know, it's pretty horrible, isn't it? You know, I mean, what does that do? I mean, is, even me as a grieving mother, I couldn't do it if I were you. Oh, really? Yeah, what would you do? Because you don't have any choice in the matter. I'm a mom who would have said that to you. Oh, I couldn't do it if I were you. You're given absolutely no choice. So I said to Coach Kill, you know, when I'm down and out, the thing that saved me is when people would pray for me. So are you okay if I pray, for, pray with you? And I prayed with Coach Kill. And when he's done, he goes, oh, Deb, you're a good girl. So I'm like, yeah. So on March 5th, 2014 was Kaylee's nine-month anniversary. And it was a tough day. And when you lose someone, like the fifth of each month was horrible. And, you know, the one year is horrible. But nine months was hard because that's how long it takes for you to have a baby. And so it was just really tough for me. And so Tyler was there. Uh, he came home from Mankato State University. Ty came. My mom and dad were there. Jesse and the twins and Connor and my son Josh and my husband. And we were all together. And it was a, just a fantastic night. Uh, here's a picture of Tyler and I. Uh, and we're dancing here. And he said, this tweet says, my mom mom is too nice. So I just wanted you to know that his mom's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case you wondered, this particular night I said, Tyler, I feel joy for the first time. He's like, I know mom, I do too. Like I feel we're going to be okay. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to be okay. And I looked in him, him in the eyes and I said, Tyler, if God should ever choose to take you, because we're not guaranteed tomorrow, but if he should choose to take you, you're going to have to ask him if you can come down here and give me some signs because this mom is not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. He's like, oh, yeah, mom, I'll, I'll tell him. OK, good. Yeah. And say hi to Kaylee. Yeah. OK, good. And I said, and, how, and she tell her to send me some more signs, too. Yeah, I'll tell her, mom. And Tyler, if God should choose to take you, because like I couldn't have given you more of myself. I couldn't love you more. You couldn't have been a greater son like Ty, literally like the best gift that God could ever give me. I just need you to know that. He's like, thanks, mom. And then when he went to kiss me goodbye, I said, oh, no, 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 kiss me right here, right here on the lips. And my husband goes, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I go, I go, hey, Keely died like that. 
And I don't want to leave a moment. I don't want to leave a word unsaid. I want everything out there. I will never, ever live with that regret of not, the last words I said to Keely was that I love her. And I said, I just want to make sure that you guys all know this. So he gives me a kiss on the lips. Okay. And, um, and I said, I go, I just, I really want it just in case it's the last. And two days later, he was tragically killed in a car accident. It was an icy road about a half mile from my home. Four boys lost their life. And you know, you're at that point where, come on, you know, like, I don't think I can do this. I mean, so he's, I have two bio biological children, and he takes them both. And I was just like, I don't know. So I was at a faith conference. I was at a conference called Set Apart. And we had my vehicle, and it was a snowstorm, so we had to drive home. And I sat in the front seat. And I remember I had been working really hard on building my faith. And when you're struggling in life, you can sit back and be passive, or you can dig into it and find the Lord. Because when you knock on the door, he'll answer. But you can't sit back and let it consume you. And on the way home, my sister-in-law told me, and a friend in the vehicle said, the whole way home, I thanked God. Thank you for giving me Tyler. Thank you for giving me Kaylee. Thank you for giving me my family. Thank you for dying on the cross so I can see them again. I know the chain will link and I'll link again. I know I'll see them again. Because you can only think one thought at one time. And I had to make it good because otherwise I would sink and fall. I know Tyler and Kaylee are in heaven and I know I'm gonna see, it again, see them again. I'm so grateful that I was given the opportunity to be their mother and I'm so grateful that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So signs from Tyler. Remember I asked him for signs. Kaylee's flower died and these little petunias started growing up in that pot. And when I went out there and looked at them because I thought they were weeds, it bloomed like that. And I thought, well, how about that? You know, there's Tyler White with a little bit of purple in the middle of it. Uh, I thought, you know, he's classy, a little bit of Kaylee. All right. This is in my sidewalk right outside my front door. And look at that. And look at that. <laughs> the littlest things that can just really make your day. And this is what it looks like right now. And I laugh because you see that one little purple one? She just can't let it go, you know? She's just like, yeah, you just can't have that. And conquering epilepsy, Kaylee's been on the Jumbotron at the University of Minnesota Gopher Stadium at TCF Stadium. Coach Kill, I got a picture of that picture in his book. He has spoken at our, our, at our 5K two years in a row. And we've given over $30,000 to epilepsy. Those petunias right there, well, they look like weeds, but that's what they are. And I didn't plant any of them, and they've grown two years in a row. So I feel it's a garden party of angels. So petunias have been come, becoming just so amazing in my life. So now we have Co Kate, Coach and Kaylee's Purple Petunia Project, with proceeds going to Coach Kill's Epilepsy Fund. And it's the story of the purple petunia and how Coach and Kaylee met. And it's my favorite Bible verses on top of the purple petunias that have, are the petunias that have showed up around my house with epilepsy facts. And we're selling those now and proceeds go to the Epilepsy Foundation to Jerry's Chasing Dreams. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. You know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. We've had so many beautiful things happen as a result of Keely and Tyler passing away. And so many lives have been saved because they've passed away. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later. This life is just a skip and there's so much more than this.